Yo guys, and welcome to another episode of Age of Empires 2. Uh, this time we're playing in the HD edition with, uh, with my friend who's gonna demonstrate a night rush. So basically, um, just getting right into it, he's starting off with a basic six villagers on sheep, which is basically what almost everyone starts off with. A very decent start. He's starting to scout all these, all his surroundings, trying to find out his main gold, his main forge bush area, his main stone if he needs it. This is a night rush tutorial, of course, and he won't really be going for stone unless, unless it's the only case. Uh, you're going to go for a tower rush, or if you're going to go for a castle drop after you do the night rush, and the knights are just to like help you kind of get your castle up on the enemy's base. So basically what he's trying to achieve is about four on wood uh, and this four on wood will help him sustain enough production for a while that he can make houses, farms, and mills. Those are the three buildings he's going to be building soon and so as you can see he's getting all his sheep. He has not yet found the enemy which is totally fine. You want to be able to find your enemy in the first five minutes if you're going for a feudal rush and you can wait until feudal age if you're going for a castle rush. However, if you want to be, want to make sure uh, enemy isn't rushing you, it's good to find if you're about to advance to feudal is a good time to find if your enemy is starting to rush or even before that would be better. Uh, normally with any sieve that's not the Huns that has houses, I would build a house then lure the boar. So that way I can make sure I'm not pop capped. But since um, my friend here is the Huns, he's playing this whole game, by the way. I'm just commentating over it. I can do it myself, but I feel like it's better to have a different person play it. So that way I can get better at commentating. Not just that. I can actually uh, show you what other people would do. Not just me in any situation. So he's got the boar and he didn't lose any villagers, which is great. Now, what his job is to get five on forge bushes. Now, normally at this time, I'd go for six on wood. But that's my build of the night rush, or just what I usually do when I go for a night rush, is after I lure my first boar, two on wood, then I go for the second boar, then I go for five on forage. Uh, this can help my wood production be good for enough farms, uh, but that's literally what I do any game I play, so yeah. I want to make sure my wood line is very good because without wood you cannot access farms and when you run out of food you can only have so much food without farms. Farms are the best way to uh, gain food after you lose because I mean not after you lose but after you lose all your resources that can give you food this is a great way to do it. You can also use fishing but of course that's not a renewable resource. Farming is renewable at least in this game. Uh, you'll usually have enough wood on a map to be able to farm and you can sell food at the market to buy um, to get gold to buy wood you know all that kind of good stuff so he's scouting I try to help him a little bit here and there because sometimes he had some idle time and that's totally fine everyone has idle time so you gotta realize that he gets loom right now pretty good um, usually uh, on the online games I recommend this if you don't want to lose your villager if lag strikes or if you're just not good at luring boars uh, once you build a house near the boar get loom like I, I mean after you make that villager get loom like after you make the boar luring villager of course that was a weird boar lure that he did but um, he's still doing very well in this game right now so uh, props to him for being able to do this well and he's a pretty good player so as you can see he found a relic as well so just in case late game he wants to secure that for more gold income go ahead but with a night rush honestly th that should be enough to kind of uh, give you the edge in the game and help you kind of win unless the opponent can counter it without being harmed at all or without having losing half their economy or at least like some good portion of their economy the thing about most rushes that are failed or they, that they succeed if the enemy is not gone in that rush and you're not working on eco uh, you have to make sure that you're also working on your economy because when you're rushing you want to make sure that you if he actually doesn't resign or if he's actually not gone and you fail the rush you want to make sure you have your eco to back yourself up the rush was just to interrupt his economy and make sure he doesn't always 
get the edge on you. That's literally what rushing is about. Not to get the opponent out of the game all the time. That's not what a rush is. Unless you really like to get your opponent out all the time. The good thing about the Huns in a night rush is they're the most used Civ for night rushing. Uh, mainly because they don't require houses and they have the full night line with bloodlines and all the night upgrades. Uh, from the blacksmith which include, includes all the barding armors. And so I included transitions just to make sure you guys um, guys could see a little further and I don't want to make the video too long. This is about a 15 minute video. And as you can see, um, he is scouting the enemy and he's found his wood lines. He's not even in feudal yet, so that's a good thing to do is to just scout your enemy, find his wood lines and his gold. If you find his wood and gold, which are usually further away from the town center than his food is, you can make sure you can box him in a little bit and kind of restrict his economy from actually booming. That's the best part about rushing, is you can always restrict your enemy if just performed right. He's also gathering his deer, which I normally don't always gather gear, deer, not gear, but uh, I don't always gather gear, deer, <laughs> okay, but when, when I do, it gives you a nice food income and can also help you get to castle quick, quicker. So what you want to make sure you do is just in case you're not, you think you're not going to get enough food income in this game, invest in deer. They're a great food resource and they're gathered from quick. If you're the Mongols and you want to do a night rush, which is also a good tactic, you can also go for deer because they're the best hunting save because of the hunting bonus. They, they just like, they get all the food so fast, I can't even tell you how fast they get it. Also, if you're planning to actually do stable drops, that's also good. If your enemy is further away from you, that's more of a suitable option. If you have stable drops like near the enemy, you can actually gain more map control and expand towards that stable with more buildings and more more town setters, castles, even units, like you can expand. Basically what I like to do in rushes is to gain more map control so usually I drop it a little closer to the enemy than where I drop it in my base normally if I was just going for like just making an army instead of actually using it at same time he just got the feudal upgrade and his scout also got buffed a little bit because when you go, go in a feudal age and you have a scout cavalry he gains two attack and also gains two more line of sight it's a nice add they added in age of Con conquerors 1.0 C and uh, or 1.0 E either one is fine but yeah they added that and I think it's pretty cool now he's starting to build a blacksmith and stable the reason he's doing this blacksmith as well, you need two feudal age buildings to go up to castle. And that's a good way to go up to castle with the, the buildings you need. He can easily go into castle right now, but he wants to make a few more villagers just to make sure his economy isn't suffering. You want to have at least like 20, 28 villagers before you go into castle with this. You can start with 26 in dark, add two more in feudal, and you can actually just advance that quick. It's not even that hard. He immediately quick clicks the castle age. I didn't do that for him. He actually clicked it himself. Don't worry. I would my I'm just my cursor is there, so that way you guys can just like look at what he's doing at the specified moment or what he's been doing correctly that I can point at. Um. So right now he's bringing his deer villagers back to the town center to harvest the sheep that he's found. He's also found more sheep near a co-op glitch. The thing about Age of Empires 2 HD, it has a lot of glitches, and one of those glitches is a co-op glitch. I can't spectate a 1v1 with if one player is an AI, I can spectate a 2v1 if two players are at least human. So yeah, it's a little complicated and it's kind of sad that I couldn't just spectate and I had to co-op with him, but it's nice because I got the recording and hopefully you guys are enjoying the video so far um so as you can see his economy is very decent although his wood is lacking a little bit he's still fine and he's about to launch his attack and he's about to make the troops he's almost in castle and he got there got there in about 17 minutes a good castle time is around 16 to 17 minutes when is when you should hit castle uh, that'll give you a good lead on your opponent and also if he's rushing you in feudal uh, and you're actually getting the castle and he hasn't actually destroyed you yet that is a huge advantage 
because if he hasn't really done enough damage to your economy and you hit castle before him, that's going to take him a long time to hit castle. And as you can see, he's just scouting the enemy a little more. He has not found his gold source yet, but he's just making more knights. Honestly, uh, the main two things you need to find in scouting are his wood lines and his gold. If you can drive him off his wood, he can't make more farms or more buildings or even more units that require wood. If you drive him off his gold, you'll lose access to everything but trash units. Uh, trash units are really good counters to gold uh, units, but however, some units... Uh, let's say that are better like knight you can't just use spearman you'll have to get an upgrade for pikeman which is 215 food 90 gold um, if you don't have the gold to make that possible you can't actually upgrade it so right now he's just harassing his first wood line I think it's better if you just start off a little slower and just go for the first wood line instead of sending all your troops in different places it's always good to surround your troops don't get me wrong but you can fail your attack actually if you go for more aggressive unless you know the opponent isn't actually doing that well you scouted him enough to know where you should attack him as you can see just driving his villagers off the wood line which is excellent good played by him well played by him right now and so he's just gonna back off from the town center the thing is you want to get away from the town center because if anything is garrisoned in it like a villager it can fire arrows uh, I don't know if uh, infantry or, or actually I know archers can fire arrows and only infantry can fire arrows if you have the Teutons or Teutons I like to say Teutons some people say Teutons I'm not too sure uh, if you have the crinolations unique tech which is available in Imperial Age infantry can fire ar arrows from any building except for barracks stables all the mil military buildings and so right now I'm just like looking around the map seeing if he's uh, done anything extra I put a sheep to scout there for some reason because I was just a little bored because <laughs> I wasn't doing the commentary this is not live um, I don't usually do uh, after recording commentary and so right now he found the gold line and that's pretty much GG because now without gold you lose access to some of the most valuable weapons and like you can't upgrade your units without gold after feudal age like after any feudal age upgrade, all of them cost gold unless you have the Spanish, which have a sib bonus, which makes no blacksmith text cost gold, which saves you about a thousand gold, I think, which is really good. Alright, so right now he's building a siege workshop, and that will just increase his control. He's just doing absolutely, he's doing so well right now, and he can't be stopped, but however, the good counter by blue is blue as a monk and pikeman. Monks and pikemen are great counters to night rushes. Um, knights are weak to monks and also pikemen, so that's just great that he countered, but a little too late. So now that he has, or at least my friend has, affirmed control, he literally has the game in his hands. He decides to make a battering ram, which is a good choice. I would have gone Man Manganel, but that's what I always go. So I think battering ram's better because you could just get rid of the buildings and Manganels are pretty easy to kill as battering rams are very tanky. Uh, it's easier to kill a Manganel f um, rather than a battering ram, even though battering rams have no melee armor, they're still, they're still very good because of their high HP. He's just making more town centers, and it's a little. That was a little late. However, there's only one exception. He was pretty low on wood, and that's where you need to think about your wood economy, because uh, as I said, lumber is a very important resource. Without it, you can't make f farms, which limits you on food. You can't get some technologies, and you can't even build buildings. Guys, that's it for the recording. Hopefully you enjoyed. Leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, it's been real. It's Plume Darcher here. And I was just explaining the Night Rush with my friend, Martin, who helped me make this video. Thank you so much, Martin. He's from Germany. And that's it for the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. If you want more tutorials, comment down below which ones you want. And this is Plume Darcher. Peace.